powerful. The writer of Hebrews says about the truth. In Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In this passage here today, after Jesus identified what the truth is, he begins to use the truth against those who are there. You see, this crowd is there, and they begin to uh, begin to wonder things within themselves. Is this really the Christ? You know, why haven't the Pharisees arrested him yet? Maybe they know something we don't know. I want to show you today that the truth can do some very powerful things in our life, and why it is so important that you understand that the truth is a powerful weapon. The first thing I find that truth can do in our life is truth will cause you and I to examine ourselves. Look here, if you will, in this passage in verse 26. All of a sudden, this crowd, as Jesus is speaking in the temple, they began to examine themselves. Look there in verse 26. It says, Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? And verse 27 says, But we know where this man comes from. And when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So here you have a crowd, and they began to examine themselves. Well, they think, well, maybe this is the Christ. And then they stop for a moment and they say, no, 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 this can't be the Christ. Because when the Christ comes, we won't know where he comes from. We know where Jesus was born. So they, they actually dismiss that he could be the Christ. And doubt began to to come up and creep up on the inside of them. They were that close to accepting the truth. But they allowed emotions and doubts and fears to creep in and to hinder that truth from bringing them to the point of repentance. Doubt and fear a lot of times comes up and the emotion that comes with it is not based on truth. It's just ideas that, that Satan throws in our minds to doubt God or doubt his existence or doubt his word. And we began to believe those things. Remember when John the Baptist was in prison? This is the great John the Baptist who was able to stand out and proclaim when he saw Jesus coming, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But after John the Baptist was put in prison, all of a sudden he began to struggle and wrestle with doubt. I mean, imagine being in John's position. You baptized Jesus, and now you're in prison. Imagine how Satan could use that as an opportunity to say, no, 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 he wasn't really the Christ. You see, you are mistaken. Look at where you're at now. You surely, if you baptized Jesus, you wouldn't be in this predicament. And doesn't Satan do the same thing to us on a daily basis? If you really were saved, why did you think that thought? If you were really a Christian, why, why, why didn't you go to church on Sunday? And then, you know, those things begin to creep up. Well, you know, if God really loves you, why did you get laid off from your job? If God really hears your prayers, you know, why, why did he not answer yes on that? And all of those things that, that come into our minds and our hearts, we have to deal with on a daily basis. And sometimes we just, like this crowd, just dismiss it and say, no, no, this can't be a Christ. But look at what John the Baptist did. You probably know the story. He sent his disciples to Jesus. In Matthew 11, 2, when his disciples came to Jesus, they said, are you the one? Or should we look for another? And Jesus told them, his disciples, you take this message back to John. In verse 4 it says, Jesus said, go and show John again those things which are done. That you do hear and you do see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised. So Jesus didn't just say, go tell John I am the Christ. Instead, he said, you take back to John the truth. You tell John what you have seen. The blind are, are being healed. And the lepers' uh, spots are being cleansed. And the lame are walking. When they took that back, John knew for sure then that this is the Christ because of the signs that he was performing. The trouble is, most of the time in our life, we don't take the time to be like John the Baptist and examine ourselves and see what we really believe. Instead, we are too busy examining 
everyone else. We are too busy pointing the finger instead of looking in, into ourselves. Maybe if we would spend as much time examining ourselves as we do everybody else, we might actually begin to see things in our life that we need to, to confront with the truth of God's Word. But you see, we have this philosophy that as long as I can find somebody in the church or in my community that's worse off than me, then I'm doing all right. So we find the worst person we can find, right? And, and we say, well, compared to them, I'm doing pretty good. I go to church more than they do. I know more of my Bible than they do. So, you know, I, I, I'm a better person than they are. And we build ourselves up like that. But you know what the Bible says? Don't compare yourself to everyone else. Compare yourself to Jesus. And the Bible says, when you compare yourself to Jesus, we all fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. Because Jesus is way up here, and we are way down here. But we have to take the time to examine ourselves. Now, here we observe the Lord's Supper and Communion every single Sunday. And the Apostle Paul told the church in Corinth that during that time, it's actually to be a time of self-examination. He says in 1 Corinthians 11, 28, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. A time of self-examination where we look into ourselves and say, Do I really believe what I profess? Do I believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do I believe that His Word is true? Do I believe that I am saved? Do I believe that He's coming again? Isn't that what Jesus did to the woman at the well? Remember, she was just going out that day to get some water. She comes to the well. And while she was there drawing water, she runs into Jesus. Your life's never the same after you have an encounter with Christ. And Jesus, the first thing he said to her was, uh, after he had asked for a drink, he says to her, go call your husband. She said, well, I don't even have a husband. Why did Jesus ask such an intriguing question? He already knew that she didn't have a husband. She, he knew she had had five and she was living with a man she wasn't married to. But why did he ask that question? Because he wanted her to come to the same point that Alcoholics Anonymous wants people to come to today, and that is he wanted her to look into herself and see that there was sin. What does they make him say? I am an alcoholic. I have a problem. What did Jesus make her say? I don't have a husband. And he made her come to that point where she had to look into herself and see that there was a need. But until we examine ourselves, we never see the need to come to Christ or see the need to get our to, to get our uh, our doubts answered with the truth of God's word. We are coming upon the anniversary of 9/11, a day in America where the whole nation for a moment took a step back and examined themselves. We began to ask ourselves the serious questions of life: Why am I alive? What is my purpose? Is there life after death? If there is a God, does He love me? If there is a God, is it important to my life? What is really important to my life? And many people began during that time of self-examination to turn back to Christ. To turn back to God. And to spend more time with family as they began to realize they had gotten off focus of what really mattered. And I encourage everyone here today to take a moment and examine yourself. All of those fears, all of those doubts, all of that sin that we, that we face on a daily basis, have you ever taken the time to deal with it? Have you ever confronted it with truth? Have you come face to face with truth or do you just let the emotion of fear take control? You've seen people like that. I told you before about uh, the cars we drive and how our, our vehicles have a lot of character. You don't get that in a new car. You know the instructions that you have to give people before you drive a used car? You know, uh, wiggle the key before you pull it out, or if it doesn't start, you know. Uh, or our Jeep, and I think I've told you this before, it, you'll be driving down the highway and all of a sudden they'll start saying it's out of gas. I mean, that, that gas gauge will go to E and the light will come on and it'll be beeping at you. And, you know, 